We're going to be looking in a few minutes in Isaiah chapter 1. Uh, for some reason, I feel like I need to be down here instead of up there this morning, and I hope I don't run the cameraman nuts. Franklin Graham asked everyone in the nation to make this Sunday a, a, a special day of prayer for our president. And, and rightly so, because quite frankly, he is pretty much alone. Uh, in D.C. That is probably about the most vile, demon-infested hole on this entire planet. They are now showing just how desperately evil that they are in, because he tried to make things turn around in this country, particularly with his economy. What a lot of people don't know is that Satan is behind a movement called the New World Order. And just about all of the past presidents that we've had were part of that and they were subtly trying to bring it to pass. And then he comes in and throws a wrench in the whole thing and, and then all the evil comes out to show just how wicked our leadership of this land is. Even on a local level. It's just not in Washington, D.C. It's even in our counties. And it's going to take a horrific upheaval to even put a stop to it or slow it down to turn things around to get people to wake up and start calling on the Lord. And I'm talking about the church. I'm talking about the church. And what I'm going to read to you in a few minutes is probably going to be one of the most offensive things you've ever heard out of the Word of God. And we ought to take offense at it and get right about with it. If you don't get offended or get your feelings hurt today, something is wrong with you. Because all of us have a lot of room to improve. I want you to understand that the Bible is indeed as sharp as a two-edged sword. And I pray that what I read today will pierce the hearts and minds of everybody that's in here, mine included. I'm kind of down here, so I'm not too far from the altar myself this morning. But he says here in verse number 2 of Isaiah chapter 1, Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord hath spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The United States is the most unique nation, probably the most unique nation ever to exist on earth outside of the nation of Israel itself because when we started this country, we proclaimed it to be a Christian nation. That put us as accountable as the nation of Israel. And so I believe that very much so we parallel the nation of Israel and we do the same things that the nation of Israel has done. And so therefore these scriptures are aimed at, at the United States as well and more particularly people who claim to be a child of God. He said, I have brought you up and you have turned against me. You've rebelled against me. And the churches as a whole have. Even the Bible believing churches have rebelled against God. They've got so much of the world in it now that it's hard to distinguish what is holy and what is not holy anymore. Then he makes the, the statement here. He says, the ox knows his owner and the donkey knows his master's crib, but Israel don't know and my people don't consider. Do you know who you belong to? I ask that question. You claim to be a Bible-believing Christian. Well, do you know you were bought with a price? Do you know that you are, are not your own anymore to do whatever you want to anymore? You are owned by Jesus, and you are supposed to do it His way. And what He says, we have spit in His face. And we have ignored Him, and we live like the rest of the world. And we don't think that anything is going to come of it. But it is. Boy, I'll tell you one thing, there wouldn't be a lot of sinning going on right now if you got payment right away for it, would you? Oh, buddy, think about that for a minute. Then he says this, all oh, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, 
Even children are corrupted is what he says right here. The children are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger and they are gone away backwards. We have completely gone backwards from what this says right here of how we should live. And we wonder why all of this wickedness in this country is taken over. And on every hand, we see this group and that group said, oh, we're not going to do business anymore because they don't let us kill babies. Good God, what is going on in America? This is America. This is supposed to be a Christian nation. And if you don't agree that killing babies is a good thing, people don't want to do business with you anymore. Do you realize how far we've fallen? Does anybody realize that it's going to take something awful to wake people up? We're, We're so comfortable. We've got the status quo. We're, we're happy with everything that's going on because nobody's bothering us. But what if suddenly a catastrophe came that woke everybody up in this country? What would you do then? Do you think it's not going to happen? We've gone backwards. We've gone backwards on everything that God has told us to do when it comes to how we should live. We've just slid back. And now we think that anybody that tries to live a holy life is really something bizarre when everybody is supposed to live that way. Why should you be stricken anymore? You'll revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. God was so frustrated with Israel. He said, it don't look like that whatever I do to you, you get worse and worse and worse. I'll never forget when the horrible event of 9-11 struck this country. I was in school when it went down. And we watched it on TV with the students. And for two weeks, the chapel was lined around the wall with people begging God to save us and to restore us and, and, and forgive us of all of our sins. And then all of a sudden, two weeks later, everybody realized it won't no threat no more. And you know what they did? They went right back to what they were doing. And we never saw them again. I'm telling you people, based on what I have seen in the Word of God, that if he brings another one down on this country, it's going to make 9-11 look like a Sunday school picnic. Now, do we want that or do we want to go ahead and repent before he does something like that and start getting right with him? From the sole of the foot even unto the head, there's no soundness in it. But wounds and bruises and putrefying sores and they have not been clothed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Christians are walking around beat up, bruised, bleeding, and we think that's normal. That's not normal. The Bible says you are more than conquerors for crying out loud. And we're going around letting every demon and every devil and everything beat us up. And we sit there and whine and cry and carry on about it. And and, and then get offended and won't even come to the house of God. Now what kind of Christian is that? What kind of soldier is that? We are not even healed. How we, the church is supposed to be there to heal other people and to lift them up and to help restore them, but we can't do it because we're too busy bleeding. Your country is desolate. Oh, didn't Isaiah nail that one on the head? Your country's desolate, your cities are burned with fire, your land, strangers devour it in your presence. We've got wicked people from foreign lands coming in here and running our country and getting up there in Congress and cursing us and mocking us. When this is a Christian nation and they ought to have been ridden out of this country on the rail a long time ago and never even let in this country. And we welcome everything in here that's vile and wicked. And the church is saying, oh, we can't judge. Oh, yes, we can. This right here tells all about it right here. And it says to judge righteous judgment. But nobody wants to do that because they are so afraid of being politically incorrect. Well, this morning, I hope political correctness goes straight to the pits of hell where it came from. You're not going to hear it in here. And the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard. 
and as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. America is besieged much like the nation of Israel was. We are literally under siege in this nation and we don't realize it because the cable still works. Somebody proved me wrong. Lord, I need a drink of water after that one. It's true. We're entertained so everything's okay. We don't realize we're under siege. Anybody remember King Belshazzar? In the book of Daniel, it said he, he, he didn't realize, but his city was completely surrounded by the enemy. They were moving the river out from under his castle, and they were getting ready to march up inside of it and kill him and take over. And it said he dared to throw a party for a thousand of his lords. And they brought the, 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 the vessels out of the house of God that they had captured. And they were partying with it and making fun and praising the gods of gold and silver and all of that. And had no idea that the enemy was just about to take them. And then Daniel told them about it. And that night the king was killed. We are like Belshazzar. We, we're being besieged by wickedness on every corner and we don't even think about it because we're too busy partying right now. So. Then he said, except the Lord of hosts had left us a very small remnant, we would be like Sodom and Gomorrah. Our nation is like Sodom and Gomorrah. We have done things that they haven't thought up. But it says that the only reason that God hasn't burnt America completely to the ground is there's a little handful of Christians that's still in it that believes. But how long will that last? Don't you think about that. We have done some really awful things in this country and we don't want to hear about it. And then he said, to what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices. I am full of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of beasts and I, de I delight not in the blood of bullocks or lambs or goats. He said, why are you even giving? Why are you even plunking down your money in the offering plate if you don't want to live right for God? But a lot of people think, well, I put my tithe in this week so I'm good. I'm, I'm clear. I'm good for another week of sinning. Oh, you'd never say it out loud, but you know you thought of it. Well, I give this to the church and I give that to the church. The Lord would rather have you obey him. And he said, when you come to appear before me, who hath required this of your hand to tread my courts? Not only did God say, why are you even bother to give? Why are you even bothering to show up? Now, I don't like to say that because I'm a pastor. I'm glad to see anybody in here. But God won't play it. He said, why do you even come to my courts when you're going to live the way that you're going to live and you know you're going to do it? As soon as you leave, you're going to go right back to your sin. Why do you even show up? And I pray that if you're one of those today that you will hear something in here that will make you want to get right with God. Bring no more vain oblations and senses and abomination unto me and the new moons and the Sabbaths and the calling of assemblies. I cannot away with it. It's sin. It's a, it, even your solemn meetings, your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hates. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. He's talking about the business as usual and the rituals that the churches go through. He said, that don't mean anything to me. He said, I want you to get right with me. I want you to accept me as Savior, not go through the rituals. But we think when we show up on Sunday morning and we do our thing, we'll say a short prayer, plunk some money down, sing a song, amen, a couple of the sermons and go out. We're, we're, we're good. We're good for another week. And that whole week, we refuse to walk with him. We won't do it. We won't serve him. And he said, I hate that. God said, I hate that. And it gets to the point, he said, when you spread forth your hands, he's talking about prayer, I will hide my eyes from you. When you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Some of our leaders had the 
the gall to say that abortion is God's work publicly. They had the nerve to say that publicly, that abortion is God's work. Do you think God's going to hear their prayers? Do you think God's going to hear yours if you support garbage like that? If you are living contrary in any way to the word of God, if you are living outside the will of God, do you think God wants to hear anything you've got to say? You've got blood on your hands. Before you start asking God for this and asking God for that, you need to wash your hands and they need to be clean before God. If one church would get thoroughly right with God, one time revival would start like a wildfire. He says, wash you, make you clean, put away the evil. This is it. Put it away, people. Whatever it is you're doing that's contrary to the word of God, he says, put it away before my eyes and cease to do evil. Stop it. That's what he's saying. Stop doing it. Don't ask God how much can I sin and make it to heaven. He says, stop sinning. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Most everybody thinks only about themselves. And we don't think about everyone else. We need to be praying for everyone else. We need to be concerned with everyone else. I'm going to skip down and I'm going to read this other verse later. He says, how is the faithful city, verse 21, become a prostitute? The faithful city is a prostitute. God's church that he died for has become a prostitute. When you've got preachers selling out to the highest bidder, telling lies for money. Telling people what they want to hear because they get a fat paycheck out of it. I'd rather starve and chase rabbits than to tell you a lie. I'd be afraid God would strike me dead. And he's going to get those that are lying sooner or later. Don't think that he won't. It was full of judgment, righteousness, in it, and righteousness lodged in it, but now murderers live there. People think they're doing God's work. The silver is become dross and the wine mixed with water. And listen to this. Your princes are rebellious. Here he's talking about their leaders. Your leaders are rebellious and companions of thieves. Everyone loves gifts and follows thereafter rewards. They judge not the fatherless, neither doth the cause of the widow come unto them. People, it ain't on just a national level. One of our own is trying to get appointed to the local county school board because they're letting boys come into school dressed like girls. Locally. This ain't New York City. This is not Washington, D.C. This is Amherst County. You don't see crap like that on the news. They cover that up. But I'm telling you parents, you better watch out what your kids are seeing and what your kids are hearing because the purpose of government education as a whole is to ruin your child. That may be a sacred cow, but I'm going to kill it today. I don't care. I went to public school too. I did. But I had a mama at home and a daddy at home who told me what the truth was. When I'd come in and tell them some of the garbage that my teacher said, they would correct that. Back then, most of the teachers were scared to say that. Back then, it was a different thing. But you know what? Parents are too busy. They turn their head and they just let the school systems do whatever they want to do and tell the kids whatever they want them to uh, want to tell them. And the parents are not getting involved. You need to get involved. You need to get up in the middle of it. You paying for it. Tell them what you want to hear and what you don't want to hear for your kids. Yeah. 
People are taking bribes and selling out to the highest bidder. Your laws are now being made because somebody paid them to say something or to make a law. And most of them are corrupt. Most of them are crooked. Most of them are written out to deny you of your rights. And pretty soon they're going to outlaw the reading of this here. Even though Trump is, is all for religious freedom, bless his heart and pray for him hard because they want him out. He's not the only one up there and all of the federal government right now is about as corrupt as they can be because there was eight years before him where they stacked the deck with nothing but devils. Yeah. And he's got to fight them all to get freedom. And so people, you need to pray for him. You need to pray that a change will come in your government and you need to stand up against it and fight. You need to make a stand. Then he says here in verse 18, and I say this to all of you, come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you will be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. People, if the church don't repent, if Christians don't repent from turning their head and looking the other way and living like the rest of the world does and not making a difference and making a change and being an example for everyone else, the Bible says you'll be devoured right along with the rest of them. God has no obligation whatsoever to spare this land as of right now because we're not living for him. And, he, and the church has become so weak my mother told me that back in the 1940s that the church was a very, very powerful entity. As a matter of fact, let's back up to the 1700s. There wasn't a single candidate that ever ran for office in those days where the church didn't vet them first. They would bring, that, bring these candidates before the, 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 the churches and they would go, no, that's not a fit candidate and they didn't get to run because the church was a powerful entity. My mom was telling me in the 1940s that some building of ill repute was burning to the ground over in the city one night. And it was hundreds of people gathered around and there was an old woman in the crowd shouting and praising God while it was burning to the ground. And everybody looked over and said, oh, that's one of them from Tommy Flowers' church, Greenstone, Christian Tabernacle, to be precise. Most powerful church in Lynchburg at the time. I've, I've listened to tapes from that, and it's just absolutely amazing. I've seen pictures of that church where the auditorium was almost identical to that that we have here. And they were lined around the wall, lined up and down the aisle. They put people in the choir that didn't even sing, so they'd have somewhere to sit. And this church... Won't even a Baptist church? Won't a Pentecostal church? You know what it was? It was the Disciples of Christ Church. And the only one that I know of right now has got a sodomite flag flying in their front yard. And they put them behind the pulpit. Boy, we have fallen a long, long ways. And it's not just that denomination. It's every single one of them. Welcoming in evil committing evil and living like or worse than the rest of the world. The Bible says that such things like fornication should not even be named once among you as become of saints. And now that's an everyday occurrence. All kinds of riotous living is an everyday thing in the house of God now. Nobody thinks there's anything odd about it because we're enlightened now. Well, let me tell you this. If the church don't get right, God's going to light it up all right. We need to repent, and we need to turn away from our sins, and we need to get right with God, and we need to do it quickly. I don't know how much more time we got left as a nation. But I said all that to say this. We will never see revival 
as long as there's sin in their camp. From the least to the greatest, it needs to go, and it needs to go right now. It needs to stop, and people need to repent. And that's my message for this morning. With every head bowed, I want you to just look in your heart. And don't worry about whether Joe sitting next to you is guilty, because you are. We all stand guilty before him this morning, and we need to get right with him. And we need to start telling the truth and we need to start living separated lives according to the word of God. If the Lord has spoken to your heart this morning, I'm going to ask you to come around the altar and pray. If you are in here this morning and you have never accepted Christ as your Savior, if there has never been fruit produced in your life, you are lost. I'm going to invite you to come. But regardless, would everyone please stand? And prayer warriors, please come help me. If God is speaking to your heart to make a change one way or another, to either accept him or to walk with him, would you come? As Candy sings this morning, would you come? I know it's a big step. And I know you may have to give up something. But you're going to find out in the long run that what you gave up won't nothing compared to what you're going to get. How God will bless you if you will walk with him this morning and do what is right. And quit playing with the devil. What can wash nothing but the blood, folks. Come and take one of these folks by the hand if you need prayer. Tell them, pray with me. Pray for me. Jesus. need to pray for somebody that's true you come and pray for them this morning there's a lot of lost people out there nothing but the blood